What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Cutting the Red Tape. Uh, definitely thank you all for appreciating me or for joining in today and, and watching the uh, YouTube channel. Uh, definitely, definitely please hit that like button, share the information, and most importantly, subscribe. Definitely trying to hit a thousand subscribers. So I actually have a permanent funding source to be able to be able to be able to support veterans and service members um, across the valley through Arizona. Um, it definitely make my life a lot easier. So if you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But I got a special guest today. Uh, he's going to give us some great insights, some great things that he's doing with the veteran community. So without further ado, I will let him introduce himself. Go ahead, sir. Hey, everybody. My name is Tim Kane. I am the director for military and veteran programs with Tech One IT. We're a, an IT company that uh, uh, we're housed out of Tempe, Arizona. We run several different verticals in our company, We're from IT consulting to staffing. And on my side of the fence, I run military and veteran programs uh, that are geared or related to the workforce solutions space. And within that initiative that we have to help uh, veterans and you know, transitioning service members, soldiers in the National Guard, reserves, and spouses of all of the above, uh, we're looking to assist in uh, you know, helping them find gainful career opportunities in IT. Uh, I've been with the company since May of last year. Things have taken off. We have uh, great relationships with different employer partners, as well as the state of Arizona, Maricopa County, and local municipalities throughout the state. Um, you know, my background, I, I come from a military family. My dad was uh, in the Army for 31 years, retired command sergeant major. I'm the youngest of five children. I had the uh, awesome opportunity. Most of my uh, childhood uh, existed in Europe. I grew up in Italy and Germany for the most part with a one-year stay in Egypt uh, back in the uh, late 70s. And uh, I enlisted in the Army six days after I graduated from high school in 1990, and away I went. Uh, I had a 10-year stint in the, in the Army. I was a radio operator. Had an op radio operator. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, communications guy. So I had you know, good opportunities to go to a lot of cool schools. I ended up with an MI unit out of Fort Bragg. I uh, was on a, a long range reconnaissance and surveillance uh, detachment. Uh, the acronym is LERS. And just spent my time, you know, tooling around, if you will. Lots of, uh, I had the opportunity to visit a lot of, you know, great countries, uh, not always for that uh, rest and relaxation, but uh, most importantly, had an opportunity to help out the people that needed to be helped and provide assistance on the military side and ensuring that, uh, you know, the completion of the mission, if you will, uh, you know, happened. So uh, quick question. So yep. was it was it because of your your father and, and family why you joined the military or was it uh, a different reason? No, it, it definitely. So I, I can say that, you know, traditionally in a military family, because my uncles you know, also served alongside my dad and, you know, most of the males did. So it was, you know, the, the boys, you know, commonly went ahead and enlisted in the, in a service primarily we're, we're an army family. Uh, unfortunately, well, fortunately I'll, I'll throw out there my two cousins or my two nephews uh, kind of broke ranks and uh, joined the Marine Corps. Aha, yes, yeah, Semper Fi. Yeah. So, <laughs> so they had uh, great times and you know, both of them are, you know, they're out. You know, they did, I think, uh, two enlistments and they're out and thriving and uh, doing well. You know, have, they have their own families. But, uh, you know, the boys, you know, we all went one direction uh, just due to guidance from our dads and, you know, family in general. And my sisters, you know, all the girls in the family, uh, none of them had, you know, none of them ever took advantage of enlisting uh, or going into the military. Uh, they went the uh, college route, and uh, you know, again, they're thriving. But at the same time, uh, two of them actually, well, one of my sisters and the other girls in the family, they all married uh, military men. So, some way they stay connected for sure. Sounds like the, the the mom and dad did a pretty good job. You guys yeah. all kind of <laughs> we like know, to think so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you went, you did ten years. Uh, what caused you to get out? Why not? Why not stay the full twenty? I mean, you're already pretty much halfway there. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say that you know we always like to say we don't have any regrets, but to be honest with you, back in uh, 2004, I just got a little tired. Well, actually, late 2003, I get a little tired. You know, there was a I, I want I started looking at uh, post service opportunities, and my time was split. You know, I was actually did my first enlistment, I got out, and then I went back in. So I had that chance to taste that civilian life. And, ah. um, you know, when I got out, I had one more year left to uh, finish up at ASU. 
So I came back to Arizona, completed uh, my studies at Arizona State. I, I dual majored in political science and went into history as well. So uh, you know, dual major there, worked, worked at ASU and for Maricopa Community Colleges uh, at the veteran desk. You know, so I was working with student veterans and that's what kind of, you know, kind of geared me into that working with the veteran uh, population and a, an opportunity actually came up to be to go into teaching. And I was a high school teacher for 12 years, uh, teaching AP Gov and AP U.S. History, coached year round. But my my stay within or my connection with the Milvet community was ever you know, it, it, it was steady because I kept uh, I kept a volunteer uh kind of posture with uh with the veteran community and it really revolved around education and or workforce mostly education but now i'm you know i'm full on in the workforce uh initiative and workforce solution space okay uh, when was that transition from kind of education to to workforce <laughs> yeah so i left uh i left teaching in 2018 and i took a role at a local university as the military liaison uh, for their student services. Man, they had a, a pretty good veteran footprint there on campus. And uh, so I worked with the student veterans on campus, but I also did a lot of recruiting on the outside, going to primarily military bases and education fairs uh, to kind of present the opportunities that we had at this university. And, uh, you know, away it went, it kind of set the tone for me with really delving into it, uh, you know, kind of head on. And but I saw on the I saw it on the education side, the need for proper advisement, making sure that transitioning service members and our veterans and spouses were, you know, taking an educational path. that's going to there's going to be benefits at the end. And those benefits really go around the gainful employment side of the house. You know, right now, as it stands with veterans uh, and I'll say National Guard and reserve and spouses, they all fall into the category of being underemployed. It's, it is a big issue. Unemployment, not so much. I mean, the numbers are what they are, but nobody wants to, nobody really focuses on un underemployment. And that's when you have a credential that says you should be doing one thing, but you're only doing the other thing, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Lots of industries out there want to bring in, you know, you know the want to tap into the veteran or mill vet talent pool. Uh, unfortunately, that's not as easy as some people think it is, but also on the other side, uh, the mill vet community isn't guided correctly when it comes to civilian sector employment for those post-service opportunities. So, so is that a, is that a, an issue with maybe um, education or maybe the, the workforce? Like where is that disconnect for the, you know, as you put it under, uh, maybe you have the credentials, but you're not getting that correct job. Where, yeah, where the, does that fall at? Employment. Yeah. So I, I, it's twofold, really. I think it's a, there's parts on the education side where they're being advised to, you know, pursue a credential. Could be a degree, could be, you know, for the tech side of the house, like boot camp style training, you know, those uh, accelerated programs. Uh, the trades, for example, uh, are, are big with the Milvet community. But then also on the workforce, uh, where, where's the outreach? You know, the, the outreach is, you know, companies, they had, they, they put on their, their websites, you know, veteran ready, veteran friendly, military friendly, whatever that might, may be. Right. Well, you can put that seal on your website because, you know, essentially that seal costs about a hundred dollars to buy. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's an application, but what are they doing to be veteran ready? What is their outreach? How are they tapping into the pipeline? And, you know, so there's a disconnect there on the education side, going back to that, it's really the advisement. What do you want to, what do you want to do if you're going to get an educational credential? Do you want to use your tuition assistance while you're in, or do you want to wait till you're out and utilize, you know, post 9-11 GI Bill, uh, VR&E, whatever it might be, whatever that education benefit might be. And, you know, then they're being advised. And I'll, the, I'll use the example for IT. Uh, cybersecurity is, you know, it's, it's a target rich industry right now. Uh, you know, millions of jobs projected, not enough candidates. Well, they say that the veteran is a is a cyber candidate simply because of OPSEC, the mindset that, you know, they understand security and they bring in other KSAs from the mil from military service, those knowledge, skills, and abilities. But what they don't tell you when they're telling you to pursue that degree or pursue that credential, you know, you know, boot camp uh, credential is you don't have experience. Right. And if you don't have experience in the industry, being an entry level person is is kind of difficult. Even if the job description says zero to two year experience, 
if there's a one year, is there a person with one year, they're going to get that, even if they want to, even if they have hiring initiatives. So you know, that brings me into my current role where apprenticeships and internships are, you know, viable options and important options for veterans to be able to take advantage of. So right now in my role, one of the things I do is I, I present to the veteran or the military and veteran community apprenticeship opportunities that allow for the gaining of that experience under an apprenticeship umbrella and then convert to uh, full-time employ employment. And uh, it's, it's worked well in the non-military uh, sector, and now it's being introduced to the MilVet community across the board. There's a lot of organizations uh, like Tech One that offer uh, apprenticeship opportunities. And uh, you know, being registered with the state of Arizona and recognized by Department of Labor, uh, it seems like an easy task, but the uh, the message is still sometimes difficult to get out there. Right, right. No, no, I'm I'm very glad. So two things I wanted to hit on. Um, yep. One, the uh, I believe it was called the tuition assistance uh, inside the military. I wish number one, I would have known about that because uh, I would have, you know, used the military's dime to, to pay for a degree before I got out to use yep. uh, the GI Bill. So I think that's something that probably goes way underutilized. And you know, maybe I'm completely off base here, but it certainly was a mission, you know, in the infantry when I was <laughs> in the Marine Corps. Uh, it's all about <laughs> being released, right? I mean, you can't take right. advantage of the benefit if the command, you know, can't afford, if you will, uh, you know, just considering mission readiness and so on and so forth. Uh, those benefits are secondary or tier two priorities, you know, when you're in, uh, you know, but there's a lot of opportunities with TA, the tuition assistance, you know, they, the army cool air force cool program, which AKA credentialing assistance geared towards those industry led certifications, uh, like CompTIA, for example, and, right. and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, we're, in the workforce space, we're, I'm seeing disconnects all over the place. You know, it's not just in IT. Uh, I use it. Aviation is a really big industry right now. And, um, you know, aviators get out of the military and, you know, they have $100,000 educations coming from their, you know, rating schools or AIT, but they forgot or didn't go and pursue, you know, like an A&P certification. So now right. they're out. And they don't have that A&P certification, and then they have to go ahead and get that after they're out. Well, okay. you know, there's a lot of companies right now in the airline industry that are looking at that. And uh, my shameless plug will be for Legion Airlines. They have a military maintenance to A&P uh, track hiring initiative. And it is geared towards those aviators that just need that A&P to step up into the civilian sector to be able to start turning wrenches on you know, the civilian side of aviation. It's a great program. And there's a lot of companies out there that are really putting in place robust uh, hiring initiatives for the MilVet community so that gainful career opportunities can be uh, gotten, if you will. Do you think the military is, in your opinion, maybe allowing some of this information to seep through, you know, just like you talk about with the airline stuff, like, hey, yep, we put you through these classes, but oh, by the way, make sure you get this so you're set up you know, when you're out, do you think that information is kind of getting through or is it just, you know, not... having the opportunity to, I had visited education offices you know, throughout the United States on multiple installations, you know, both as in, in my role, you know, working with, you know, the Milvet community on education, but also when I was in the information is definitely out there, right? Um, what, where it's not, and it, and this, you know, this will come into, is it necessary? Is that the, at the unit level? Is it an NCO's job or is it a platoon sergeant's job, right, to yeah. advise on those post-service opportunities, like what you should be doing as uh, as you prepare to get out, whether it be after your first term of enlistment or when you're retiring, right? Um, is it their job? Well, you know, we can all, when we're out, we say, yes, it should be, right? But at the right. same time, mission readiness isn't all about, you know, getting you prepared to be a civilian, Right. It's, you know, waking up and fun and trying to figure out where that threat might be that you're going to get deployed to, uh, you know, which is you know, at the end of the day, that's your job. You know, when it comes down to the military, it's not about education benefits, not about health care. It's not about the travel that you get to have. And, you know, this as an 0311, which I think you mentioned yeah. uh, your day is, you know, you wake up and you don't know if there's a chance that you're going to be, you know, wheels up and, you know, crashing down within the next, you know, 12 to 18 hours. And uh, so when we, we don't look at that as being a priority for civilian sector um, preparation. Now, we all know about TAP with Transition Assistance Program, which is on yeah. every base. 
And, you know, just you know, recently we saw a couple of, um, I believe it's a representative out of uh, North Dakota is saying that TAP is falling short. Uh, as veterans, I think it's incumbent upon us to relay our experiences to transitioning service members and or veterans that are having a difficult time transitioning, right? The mill to sieve transition, as I call it, it's not an easy process, right? Sounds easy. Go to TAP, get your class, figure out what it's like to be a civilian, get your 214, pop smoke and go get a job. Yep. It's not that easy, <laughs> right? Um, and now, you know, the post 9-11 veteran, it's even more difficult, you know, because of the things that, um, you know, they're living with. So, yeah, the, uh, the, the, I guess the shortfall of the message is across the board, right? Uh, there more needs to be done at, at the TAP level. But most importantly, and, and I've made a contact with that representative up in North Dakota, is find organizations that are on the outside that are doing it right. Connect those dots with the TAP offices to allow civilian sector uh, organizations to come in and complement what it is the TAP offices are trying to do. Because, you know, it's, it's Department of Labor's in, in on the mix. They have a mandatory class that everybody has to attend when they're in TAP. Uh, and you know the message has to be put out there that you know a seamless transition is possible, you know plus the work that goes into you know that period of time, but you know pointing fingers isn't the right way. It's really just you know identifying the problem. And as you and I know, we're all about solutions. You know the old adage, "Don't talk about problems." You know I want to hear solutions, all and right. so that's where that's where the conversation needs to move to, for sure. So one gets out of the, the military, um, you know, I'll give you your, uh, your plug here. How do they, how do they find you? They say, Hey, this is the guy I heard about him. How, how do we get a hold of him and his organization? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm across the board because, you know, even though I work in it, right. So if you're a transitioning service member and, you know, I'll, and I'll make it simple. Let's just say that you have an it, uh, MOS. Let's say you're in the army, you're a 25 Bravo, you're a it specialist. Well, civilian sector employment is out there. It's, uh, you know, IT is a 0% unemployment sector, if you will, target rich with opportunity. Now they're just looking for candidates. Uh, figure out what you're going to need to complement what you did in the military, because military IT is not the same as civilian. However, everything translates, everything does meld together. You just have to have that, that train over, that crossover. So for me, uh, if you're a veteran, if you're a transitioning service member, I'm on LinkedIn, you know, Tim Kane, K-A-N-E, followed with the M period E-D. You just look me up. I'll talk to any and all, you know, to be honest with you, I'm in IT, but if you're an 88 Mike, if you're a truck driver and you want to, you want to take that skill set that you, you put together while you're, you were in the service, you want to drive trucks on the outside, I got a place for you, to be honest with you, because every, every organization that I work with they have an IT department, but they might not be an IT business. So the mining industry is looking for veterans right now. You know, they're, you know, we're looking at jobs, 65, 85K a year coming out. Got your CDL, give me a call, right? Medical, same thing. You know, top industries for veterans or transition service members, it's construction, it's government service, it's IT. IT is number three. Uh, hospitality. You want to get into the hospitality business? I got a place for you. You want to be in the aviation business? And if you're not in IT, I got a point of contact that you can call. So, you know, I encourage anybody to reach out because at the end of the day, uh, you know, it's it's helping any and all. And I, I believe that that's a, uh, it's incumbent upon us to do that. And that's not just me. You know, I, I picked that mindset up, you know, on LinkedIn from the people who, who kind of put it in my mind that it's incumbent upon me as a veteran who, you know, I had a decent transition. And I'm, you know, I'm thriving now. Well, if you're thriving, why don't we tell other people how they can thrive as well? Because we know there's a lot of shortfalls that veterans are, um, you know, getting into, and that also translates to the spouse as well. If the veteran's not doing well, you can, you know, you can probably bet that the the spouse, uh, who also transitions, spouse transitions just like the 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 veteran, you know. So, you know, it, it, again. Call us, figure it out, and uh, you know, reach out, and you and know, we're more than happy to help. For for those who don't know, uh, I can definitely vouch for for Tim here. Uh, we have you know 
had cases where we worked on together and, and Tim's just like me, you know, no BS cut to the red tape. You know, if we got to help somebody, you know, let's help somebody and we do the best we can. So um, I'm definitely vouching for the guy. I'm telling you guys, he is no BS. He will do what he can. If you can't, you will find the right resource that can help you. So I do appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's enjoyable to do, to be honest with you, you know, and as long as you're not looking for anything in return, you know, uh, I'll never monetize a, a veteran transitioning service member. It's if I have the information, it's free, right? It's emails, text messages, and phone calls at this time, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and and LinkedIn again. I'll, I'll plug that platform all day long. It's the best uh, social media platform out there for networking and getting getting to know people and what they need. And it doesn't matter what, where you're coming from. If you're coming from the special operations side of the house, as far as military service, I know, I know veterans that served in that same arena that will talk to you. And I've, I've used those resources on LinkedIn. You know, I had a, a, a guy, a special forces, a, a engineer. He wanted to speak to somebody who transitioned, who was also in, you know, in a group. I had somebody on LinkedIn, called him up. I said, Hey, I got a veteran that's transitioning. You want to help him out? Sure enough. Senior NCOs, officers, it doesn't matter. There's there's someone out there who will talk to you and it doesn't cost money. And all we're looking for is successful outcomes. Perfect. What yeah. more can you ask for, right? Right. So uh, what's the future looking like for you, Tim? Is this something you're going to continue doing? Anything else in the works? Yeah, I enjoy it, you know, because I get to talk to, you know, companies and state agencies that are all looking to, you know, they want to hire veterans. And really it's providing the pipeline. Right. That's that, that's that's where I'm at right now, providing the talent pipeline to you know different opportunities in the IT sector. Uh, I'll continue to do what I'm doing until they tell me that I'm not, you know, that I'm not able to do it anymore. Uh, it's an ever growing area. Uh, I think that more latitude needs to be given to organizations uh, with regards to being able to do their outreach to um, the, the military and veteran community. Uh, you know, I'm partnered with, um, you know, the P3O, that's the career counselors for the Army Reserve uh, side of the house, great organization, they have a live, a live pipeline that you can touch, you can tap into, if you want to hire uh, a, you know, from a demographic that definitely has an underemployment issue, definitely has an unemployment issue, Reserve, National Guard, uh, you know, it's, it's a matter of, you know, looking at where I'm at now and I see, I do see, you know, great things in the future. You know, I'm, I'm working on putting my own nonprofit, you know, online that is oh. geared towards, um, you know, IT workforce solutions, you know, employment, op or employment resources, because it all comes down to networking, right? Um, I always tell people, if I have somebody that I can, I can refer you to, you know, that's, that's what I'm here for, because I have people that want to meet uh, you know, people coming out of that mill vet pipeline. So like I said, until someone tells me I can't do it anymore, I'll continue to do it. And I'm looking forward to, you know, again, ramping that nonprofit component up as well. Awesome. Awesome. All right, man. If you, if you had the last words here, sum it down into to one piece of advice you would give our, our veterans and service members, you know, in this area, uh, what do you, what do you think it would boil it down to? You know, I'll, I'll, you know, the one thing I'll say is that your thoughts are not yours. And what I mean by that is this, if you've ever thought that if you've been discouraged, if you if you tell yourself that you don't have a network, you don't know how to do something, you're not the first veteran, you're not the first spouse, you're not the first transitioning service member ever to say that. We've all said it. So, you know, drop that, you know, get that out of your head and just reach out, you know, utilize the resources that are out there and, and don't always rely on, you know, the government side of the house because they're busy. Go on LinkedIn. Uh, network, network, network. Don't be afraid to pick up the phone and make that call. I mean, I, I'll tell you that I'll never say no. And there's a lot of people just like me in the network that will never say no. You know, we'll always take the call. And uh, I encourage everybody to reach out and, you know, take a chance because you never know who, you, number one, you never know who you're talking to sometimes. And again, you know, the network is eager to help. And that goes not only just on the employment side, but any and all resources. I mean, you look at what Marcus does, you know, with financial assistance. Now I'm working with somebody that was referred to me by Marcus uh, is, you know, looking for employment opportunities in the medical side of the, of the, of the world. You know, the soldier's going through nursing school and needs an opportunity. And, you know, I'm working with her right now. 
it's not it but you know that soldier was uh sent over and i'm more than more than happy to help so my biggest advice network and make calls and emails for sure absolutely well there you have it ladies and gentlemen the resources are out there the connections are out there you just got to be able to you know put your best foot forward and and walk through that front door so tim man i thank you i thank you for coming on the podcast and, and sharing giving the great information and, and good insight um you know given the the veterans and service members and you know the knowledge and skills and you know tools to succeed so i appreciate that thank you yeah i appreciate the opportunity make sure you guys support veterans five nine great organization action ready you know all about solutions. We're not talking problems. That's what I'm talking about. All right, guys, again, please do me a favor. If you like the content, like, share, and subscribe, you know. Um, other than that, I will put uh, Tim's LinkedIn information down in the comments. So if you guys want to get a hold of him or any of the resources that he has, uh, we'll have the information down there for you guys, and he'll be happy to help. Obviously, if you need help from Breakfast 5 to 9, we'll be happy to help. So again, appreciate all you guys for watching the podcast, and thank you, and uh, God bless. Have a great day.